So then we are back with a more understanding from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation is from the original documents of the Hebrews of old, from the prophets of Israel, giving us then directives of the end. We are then understanding more of the scripture and also the Torah and the way we should read and study the instructions. Extremely important also having the knowledge and information concerning the prophecies of our time. We then read previously sections of Yerushiahu the prophet and we found specific prophecies related with the rebuilding and precisely the time that we are living in. So then, the proper understanding of it as then the Torah wisely is dismantled for the purpose of then using the scripture as they used to use in the past. Always then layered and never sewn together. So then, when the Messiah, he was then in the temple, as then we read before, he read a section of Yerushiahu, but because it was the layer pertaining to his time. He read then a section of then the spring feast, and he halted the reading precisely at the time then that the autumn feast would start. Very smart. The 61st chapter gives you then the layer of understanding, but we should not be concerned with the numbers. We must change our mind in understanding the scripture per layered. Where is the layer then he speaks of then the completion of the spring feast? Himself as being then the very anointed prophet. Then you understand what kind of a layer we are speaking of. Then you find the Megillah concerning it. Also, there are other areas of the scripture on the same layered understanding that you find in completions of other similitude or similar, but part of it. What is it? You find the renewed covenant. The entire renewed covenant concerning then the spring feast you find in the Gospels. But have in mind, we have only 10% of the Gospels. Of the entire teaching the Messiah himself spoke and taught, we have only 10%. He explained the time of the end, the renewal time, in detail. He explained them. He explained what region of the world was that. He explained then how this refurbishment would take place. He explained then the leadership. He explained then the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. He explained the whole nine yards. He did it. But then the religious leaders of the time, every time they were going around in cluster, then they were refused. And whatsoever was left, then they were very fierce and angry. A lot of them were destroyed. We have only 10% of the record, but then we can find the rest of it in the previous covenant if we are wise then and relearn how to read it then in layers. Not chapters, not numbers. So then when you come to the section of Yerushiahu, then he's speaking of then the anointed. He was the anointed Messiah speaking of then the completion of the spring feast. The Messiah knew there was a big transitional time during his time where then his people would transition from the first service and the second service. However, he did not read the rest of it because it was pertaining then to the autumn feast. But then Shaliak Shaul, he was able then to understand the layering based upon Leviticus. The whole time and prophetic came from Leviticus. Try to understand. There is a relation from prophecy and relation from time in the earth. That's why in Hebrews 10 he stated very plainly because in the Torah you find in the shadow prophetic of events. In the Torah, in the Torah you find only the instructions. In the instructions then in the time of then they celebrate the feasts relates then the completion. 
But then comes the reflection of it then regarding the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. This is what it means. So you have the substance of then the Torah itself related with the first service. Where they, the actuality of those orders were then put into practice. However, the shadow prophetic understanding of those, you find the renewed covenant. Because every time the prophets, they came, they identified the sins, then they warned them of the consequences. People were pointing back then to the instructions. And then as they began then to obey, then were extras given, pointing them then to completion. Those were given samples of the prophetic events yet to come. When Shaul was reading it, portion of it was already completed. But he was speaking from the viewpoint from the Torah. As if he was then in the future, then he would step back in the Vedicus 23rd chapter and he said, that's where we are at, but from the viewpoint of the past. For in the Torah we find then the shadow prophetic of events. Part of it was complete during his lifetime. But he was always then back in instructions and from there he said, we are there in the future. It was the time of his own present time. But then given the analogy of then yet more events to come. That's why then when he was speaking with the Gentiles mixed with the Hebraic people or the elected, he had then explained them both. He said, don't be thinking you can then make sin equals grace. That's not the point. You are speaking of the second tabernacle services. Then for his elect, he said, no, you should not be concerned with it because you have the law of Moses. Was not the point either. So he was working both ways and then giving direct to the Gentiles, make sure they would understand, and then at the same time he would not want his people to return to the law, the demands of the law. But they must understand the prophetic shadows of the law from the Torah. Thus then a person understands in layers. Understanding then the situation in Congo. It was previously said, they are fierce people, and what is the reason then tabernacled? He's not saying that the place would become Israel, he was speaking of the rebuilding of the cities. So what is the link then with the scripture? Obviously you can find it during the time of Daniel. What was Daniel doing in Babylon? He was representing the Creator, Yahweh. And what was then the viewpoint of the king. If you come up with a lie in front of him, you have your head cut away from you. That's how you evaluate what kind of a kingdom uses than the head of gold. Because you can't lie in front of the king. If you do it, you don't have any more head. He was fierce. And via this tremendous tension in the government and the way he was involved in the court, can you imagine if you say a wrong word at the wrong time? No more head of yours. So he had to be wise. And then through this wisdom came then the very prophetic understandings of the future and we are yet experiencing it from the time of Daniel. It was 500 years earlier from the time of the Messiah. So then 3999 minus 500. What a tremendous time. And what is the link then with those people over there? Boy, have you recently watched the news? If they catch you scandalizing around and lying out, they cut you into pieces. The actual, you know, big knives and they cut you apart. So then we understand refurbishment also is coming from that region over there.
either a prophet or a sent person. And then Yahweh specified those who were sent. The sent ones over there would go there and they had to do what they should do. Tabernacling. Tabernacling. The ongoing action of His presence. As per the design of Moses. Many people around the world, oh yes, they want the great move of Yahweh. Are you prepared and to be obedient? As per the design of Moses. Because the Messiah said whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. However, there is the second tabernacle services. So then you understand, the first section of the prophecy speaks of the actual time during the time of Yerushiahu, regarding then the nation of Israel doing evil trades. Then the second portion of it evaluates the situation itself, and then compares with Israel as the city, as obviously, because he was making a reference of the city of God in the desert. That's how it started. So he's pointing the people to the model. They are not modeling themselves from the city. And then afterwards on that day. He said that day means future. The very time of a transitional time. But on that day. Then those that are sent tabernacling. If you read it from the Hebrew, you understand. If you read it from the English, you don't understand. Tabernacling. Tabernacling means bringing His presence. As per the design of Moses. It's not another preacher coming around teaching junk. When heaven is in charge, as per the instructions. That's the same, oh, but that's legalistic. In what sense is legalistic? Either you understand the instructions or you don't understand the instructions. So they are speaking from the time of the deceit. The time of the deceit is over with. Ended in 6009. We are in 6012. So junkies born and during that time, forget it. They only talk junk. And as the truth is returning, then we understand the Torah must be dismantled so then people can understand. Understand in layers. We understand Yohanan when he was in the mainland. In a camp, he had to perfectly place those Megillas in order. In order of understanding per times, per seasons. Then he was given the third role of the vengeance, or then yet, autumn feast. He was speaking of seasons. Try to understand. When Yahweh speaks then in Yerushiahu, then he speaks of the Congo previously, he speaks of the seasons. Try to understand. And then the spring, and then the harvest. What does it say? He is speaking of precisely what Shaul the Shaliak said, but in terms of then the seasons and the times, he didn't want them to be ignorant. Because they were very aware of the times and the seasons, because they were always taught the scripture via layers, and those were always layered with times and seasons. That's how a person reads the scripture. But then lunatics and maniacs came around, they changed the scripture around, and then they go by numbers and names. They make scoundrel out of themselves. Ridiculous. Then you find people, oh, there is the word of God. Oh, is that it? Is that from a prophet or from the camp? No, it's another person, not a part of the word. Hmm. Another scoundrel coming around and teaching lies.
Yahweh's ways per instructions. Either we are ready for it, or then we are not ready for it. But when you are not ready for it, and it is the time for it, then we should be ready for it, liking it or not. If you ask Daniel, Daniel, did you like the time that you were then sent to captivity? No. It was miserable. It was a long walk. My town got destroyed. My friends gone. My parents gone. My family gone. I had only myself and my friends. Lost everything I had before. They had to stand in the, in the presence of a pagan king eating pork and junk. Was it fun for Daniel? No, it was not fun. He had to endure it because the nation did not maintain the holy Shabbat, the yearly Shabbat. So they were 70 years in captivity. So the land had to rest. Then it was then. It had to study their junk. And then, because of Yahweh's grace and favor, he was then able to stand as a politician. And we understand the word today that was provided. Yahweh has provided a way out of their troubles. The nations must understand what it means, the times and the seasons. The whole understanding what they have so far of heaven was absolutely a pure putrefied lie. They have to start from scratch. First, whatsoever they understand of the Torah must be dismantled. And some people they get their big eyes then starts up because how are you going to dismantle a Torah? Yes, that's how they used to read in the past. Sections of it. Times and seasons would come, then they would read as per such. That's why there were many Megillas around. When there was a particular time and season, then they would read a particular prophecy related with times past. And then people were energized and acquainted with the information coming in the near future and those came from heaven's agenda. So they would energize themselves and maintain themselves obedient. We are during the time of rebuilding and war is prohibited. We must get used to those words, war is prohibited. Now we must take this task and go around the world saying to the people, war is prohibited. We have reached a time of rebuilding. And then explain what it means. The covenant with Abraham came first, then it was a covenant. Later then the people went to Egypt. They were the slaves. Then they were there for many years, many centuries. Then came the time where Moshe and his brother, they went to Egypt to rescue the people. Through mighty signs and wonders and a mighty hand, they came out of Egypt. Through the sea, they were parked near the mountain. Then the whole concept of nearing themselves with the Creator. Then up the mountain went Moses. Brought down the laws and they established the city. Then later came the prophet and explained the entire situation and brought the first anointing for the second service. And they would go around the world forming holy cities. So when you read in Yerushiahu, then the city on that day meaning the refurbishment. Because it's layered with 61st chapter. You have to understand the layer area of heaven's understanding and then you take the Megillus pertaining with it. On that day. Where do you find on that day? Read the 61st chapter of Yeshua. On that day. 
They have to understand on that day, he's speaking on that day, it's a special time of transition. Then when you find on that day, you have to scrutinize the scripture and find those megillas pertaining of the refurbishment. So Africa is going to be used for the refurbishment. In their area of there in Congo, very rich, they are going to be used. And if any scoundrels are going to try to be there and lie to them, they are going to be cut into pieces. Because they are fierce. They are tired of lies and these junks comes around and lies to them. They are tired of them. And when they are tired of them, they rebel and they put to death. It's very simple. Another culture, but it works. So then they want a certain move of Yahweh does not come from them, comes from heaven. And the time has come. But the situation is, before it starts, is from instructions, from the time of Moses, from the holy city. The representative of the holy city. So then when you begin to understand the word fierce, then you begin to understand another layer of then the huge people that were then in charge of the secular understanding and the secular government while the prophecies were taking place. If you find those areas, you find every time there was a prophet involved in certain nations, the times were fierce. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den at least twice. He was giving heaven's directives, but then there were scoundrels around. Always trying to take the leadership of the political agenda. And boy, those scoundrels nearly destroyed him. If it wasn't for the intervention from heaven, he would be eaten by lions. Fierce times. Then Cyrus came. Fierce times. When the heaven is in charge, then the secular people, they don't take junk. But they try to do their own junkies, but they won't do it. So then you understand the prophecy, you should be glad for it.